Public Works is presented by Heavy Constructors Association of Greater Kansas City. For many people in Kansas City, the water bill has become unaffordable. I go over here and pay my gas so we are gas, but I don't have enough money for the water. Prices have rocketed and they're set to rise even more. If the water rates increase this month, they don't have the money to pay for it. Don't pay your bill and they'll cut you off. The numbers are staggering. I can't cook, I can't clean, I can't groom, me or my kids. We're paying to keep sewage out of our rivers, but are they getting any cleaner? The Blue River is brown and you wouldn't let your dog drink from here. We ask whether parts of our community are shouldering too much of the burden. First of all, I don't think that the public can continue to support the full weight. As far as the rates going up, we have to still be fair. And we ask whether our local leaders can find the right answers. And I think we have said, this is going too high, too fast. Mm -hmm. That's our excuse, she's trying to keep the kids together. Just right, over a year ago, Pamela and her yeah, three fine. sons moved to Kansas City from Columbia, Missouri. Come down as soon as you get done. Pamela lives with a mental illness, and she's determined to make the most of her life. I'm studying right now my bachelor, a major in psychology, and I've been working really hard at that, so I'm proud of myself. While she finishes her studies and hunts for a part-time job, Pamela and her family rely on her monthly check from the Social Security office to get by. I have to observe my bills when they come in versus my finances and not being underwater with all of this. In Colombia, her utility bills are affordable. Here, they're not, including the one for water. I paid 300 and then it went back up to like $556. Last year, Pamela's average monthly bill for water, wastewater, and stormwater was just over $130. If she'd lived on the other side of the state line in Overland Park, her combined bills are likely to have been nearly 30% less. Looking back at last year, the water bill was not affordable at all. Since the year 2000, the average water bill in Kansas City, Missouri, has risen by over 240%. Nonprofits have had to step into the breach to help those who can't keep up. Towards the end of last year, Pamela came here to Bishop Sullivan Center in the northeast of the city. So she came in needing assistance with her water bill and we were able to assist her. I definitely had a lot of people speak to me about, hey, the water's increasing and so I need help with that because I had to choose between paying for water or medication or food. Bishop Sullivan Center has two branches serving the east side of town. Our client's water bills are not 50 and 75 and 100 dollars, but their water bills are now 200 dollars. They don't have the money to pay for it. And north of the river, in the same water district, you'll hear the same story. What you see is people living on a very limited income. Any change in, in the amount going out or the amount coming in has a drastic effect, and the people are having to make difficult decisions. Rising bills are one thing, but customers who can't pay face another issue. It is not possible to live in your home without water, and by law, you're not supposed to live there. You know, I think no one should be living in America without access to water, and that's what's happening. Last year, before Pamela reached out to nonprofits for assistance, she and her family had their water cut off twice. Anyone can tell you, as soon as that water cut off, you know to go and is some still in the pipes or in the train, you're going to get it. You know, I'll put the lid down on the toilet. That you get about two or three flushes. Pamela's so worried about being cut off again, she's stashing water around the house. Got to have the water, just in case. I try to keep water on hand after experiencing those trials. If your bill is over $150 and 56 days past due, you could be cut off. Don't let the water run too long, OK? It was in 2008 that KC Water, which services around 150,000 households, decided to start enforcing its cutoff policy. Since then, it's cut off nearly 140,000 accounts. Last year, it cut off over 21,000. In Johnson County, Water One, with nearly the same number of accounts, cut off just over 1,500. 
Kansas City, Kansas, claims it doesn't keep a record of cutoffs. We wanted to find out some more about which parts of our city are seeing the most cutoffs. So we took Casey Waters data for nearly 60 zip codes to Professor Bani Yacoub, who teaches math at UMKC. Divide this in two parts, like. We added to it data about household income, and he asked his class to analyze so for it. For each room, you have 11 zip codes. I have asked my students to look at the data and see if there is any correlation between the level of income and the number of water cutoffs and the prevalence of water cutoffs. We'll find out later on which parts of our community have been hit the hardest. We can do 80 zip codes and it shouldn't take much time. But why have Kansas City, Missouri's water bills gone up so steeply? Well, we're told it's mostly to do with this. South of Overland Park in Kansas, where the city gives way to countryside, two creeks meet to form the Blue River. At just over 40 miles long, the Blue River flows downstream from Kansas into Missouri through the east part of town before it meets the Missouri River. Its tributaries include Indian Creek and Brush Creek. Water bills have gone up as the federal government forces Kansas City, Missouri to clean up these rivers. Over the years, these are waterways that have been cared for by a volunteer army of conservationists. My name is Evan Smalley. I'm a Missouri Department of Conservation stream team, 1682. We're a, a group of volunteers that protect our local creeks and streams. For nearly 20 years now, Evan has worked on this stretch of the Blue River near to his home in southeast Kansas City. I'm so sorry to say it is a great tragedy that our city is ruining one of the most beautiful rivers there is. The Blue River is brown, and uh, you wouldn't let your dog drink from here. There's been some heavy rainfall a couple of days before, but it's not just the color of the river that concerns Evan. It says Jackson County sewer. You can see that it blew the lid right off. This is the sewer that overflows whenever it rains. Water comes gushing out of this sewer two feet in the air, and uh, it just gushes out of there all day. This is what he's talking about. Well, this is sewer overflow into the Blue River, and I just wonder how much we could save the uh, river quality. And just upstream from this pipe, there's another this, one Evan's this, concerned about. This always flows into the river. Whatever's coming out of that is flowing into the river all the time. Pipes like these use the rivers as a convenient drain. This one in Parkville on the Missouri River is from a drinking water treatment plant and is under a state permit. This world is a treasure. We should caretake what has been made for us. And we need our rivers clean because they're the source for much of our drinking water. For example, nearly 50% of Missouri's public water comes from the Missouri River. In 2010, the Environment Protection Agency, or EPA, gave Kansas City, Missouri 25 years to upgrade its sewage system and thereby reduce the volume of spills. How much will it cost? Anywhere between 4.5 and $5 billion. And as a new sewage system is laid, bills go up to pay for it. The city council acknowledges that income rates haven't kept up. And I think we have said, this is going too high, too fast. The rate of growth of income is not matching up where we thought it would back in 2008. It's only now that the city is making the investment that's been needed for decades. You had people, um, they're trying to keep things together with, you know, baling twine and bubble gum and losing that battle. Deb Herman runs a non-profit now, but in 2003, she was elected to the council. We hadn't paid to have it improved. Deferred maintenance infrastructure, the facilities were in terrible condition. Water rates are reviewed and approved by the council. Prior to Deb's tenure, councillors have been reluctant to raise rates to pay for the needed upgrades. There's an interesting idea of having an independent commission made up of experts in the field that would at least provide recommendations or maybe even the decisions on rates to keep the political process out of it. But would accountability then be sacrificed? 
What I find at the end of the day as a council person is people prefer to be able to call their elected official and ask for help. When you have independent commissions, it doesn't work as well. As the city spends on installing new sewers, over $350 million so far, councils have voted for rates to go up and up. Most of the work has been underground, but some of it's visible. Welcome to the Marlborough Community Coalition in the southeast of Kansas City. This is exciting. This is an opportunity to not only have a wetlands, we have the basketball court facility, the playground facility, a place to gather. Marlborough is not only getting a new sewerage system, it's also getting new parks designed to capture and filter rainwater. And money has been spent on some of the blocks. We're at the site of one of the curbside rain gardens and standing on some permeable sidewalk. And this is one of the prettier ones just because how it looks in the fall with the plumes. And Marlborough is a very, very old neighborhood, so we have not had any of this type of improvement for years and years. The city has budgeted $86 million to spend on what's called green infrastructure. Its main job is to keep the rainwater out of the old sewerage system and thereby reduce the number of spills into the Blue River. Uh, yeah, I know how to get to the Blue River, but it's not easy. And the average citizen in Marlboro probably hasn't been to the Blue River. I think it would be a great idea for the residents to get to go. We all need to go in a bus and go see just exactly where all of this water goes that we've collected. So a huge investment is being made and the Blue River is going to be cleaned up. Or is it? When I moved out here, I started looking around for places to fly fish, and the Blue River was kind of the first place I saw it. This stretch of the Blue River lies upstream of Marlborough, which means the water here flows down towards it. Uh, the place I'm fishing at right now used to be one of my favorite places to fish back up through the 90s. There was, there was always a lot of fish here. Bill fishes for species that prefer clean and clear water, such as bass, bluegill and crappie. Well, when I first started fly fishing, what I noticed was probably where Indian Creek comes into the Blue River. From that point downstream, the river was maybe more polluted. Anywhere upstream of there, I could fly fish in relatively clear water. But Bill has had to keep on moving upstream towards the state line to find the clearer water. Today, he's not sure where he'd find it. No, we have no idea where, the, where that cutoff is, where there actually are fish that require the cleaner water. This may be the experience of a fly fisherman, but it raises a serious question. Are residents of Kansas City, Missouri, paying to clean up a river that's becoming increasingly polluted upstream? Here's the Blue River watershed, or basin. Most of the rainwater that lands in this area will make its way into the Blue River. You'll see that a large part of the basin is in fact in Kansas. What happens here affects the water downstream in Missouri. For years now, scientists from the US Geological Survey have studied the Blue River. Up until 2010, the USGS had the contract to test the water quality on the Missouri side of the basin. Don Wilkerson was its lead scientist. This site compares favorably to other sites in the urban Kansas City area, but it's still not what we would consider you know, highest quality uh, by the mechanisms that we use to rate that. We collected the water quality data going back 10 years from the bodies that test the Blue River on both sides of the state line. We shared it with Don, who added it to his own data. So what's his assessment of how the river is doing? There's a number of different pollutants that enter the river. And the one that I think people are most familiar with is bacteria. And some of that is the result of aging infrastructure. But in the Blue River itself, the main source of bacteria comes from what we call just runoff. Runoff. This parking lot is beside Indian Creek on the Kansas side of the city. Water from here flows into the Blue River. A light rain onto an impermeable surface, and watch what happens. This is runoff. So roads, parking lots, roofs, lawns, 
field so when it rains those can mobilize bacteria and deliver them to the stream. And a lot of the pollution is making its way into the rivers on the Kansas side of the state line. In particular, as the upper parts of the watershed are developed. You can do everything that you want in Kansas City, Missouri, but still you're going to have issues with water quality until issues throughout the basin are addressed. In fact, a 2009 plan by KC Water noted a watershed approach is clearly needed to deliver meaningful improvements in water quality. But seven years on, and the feasibility study has yet to start. So it turns out that Bill Brandt's experience is telling. In 2006, Kansas found that the Blue River and Indian Creek contained six impairments linked to pollution. In 2016, the total had risen to 11, and now includes chloride. This is despite Johnson County wastewater during the last 15 years, spending over $130 million to try and protect the watershed. For Don, there's an environmental justice issue at play. And one of the things that's always struck me as a citizen is how the most affluent part of the basin has the best water quality and the least affluent part of the basin has the worst water quality. People in the upper part of the basin are essentially pooping uh, on people in the lower part of the basin. And by that I mean because of this state line divide, I can ignore what happens downstream of me. Let's have a look at the median household incomes of the zip codes the Blue River flows through. The poorer zip codes get the dirtiest river, and yet they're being charged to clean it up. We've already done irreparable damage in large parts of the basin. There's a point at which you can't come back from it. Again, it comes back to what is it you want, and what are you willing to pay for? And who's being asked to pay for it? Tough political decisions have to be made. In April of 2016, a mayoral appointed task force started 12 months or so of public meetings. It's considering, amongst other things, what should be done to address the burden to customers of rising rates. It would seem, however, that not all wastewater customers have been bearing the same burden. KC Water also has nearly 30 wholesale customers, which includes Johnson County, Liberty and Lee's Summit. In the last five years, their volume charges have gone up at less than half the rate of that of residential customers. Is that fair? So from our point of view, and this is something that the task force looked at, it's less about uh, fairness and what is the result of manipulating that change. If you shift the burden, you're also losing a huge chunk of potential customers for the utility. And someone else hasn't been asked to contribute as much in 2008, a similar task force recommended to council that developers pay a charge towards the sewers servicing their developments. But this was never implemented. For me to say what happened in 2008 and subsequently uh, is either fair or unfair doesn't really get to the fact that we're dealing with those issues now. I would just as soon say, look at what the product is that we are going to come up with and then decide whether we have taken a fair look at all ratepayers or not. For the time being, it's residential customers who are bearing the brunt. And we wanted to find out which ones in particular. At UMKC, Professor Bani Yacoub and his class have been Alrighty, crunching so the data. I'm ready to go too fast, so we'll see what they will have. They've been analyzing which residential customers experience the most cutoffs. Um, the prevalence decreases. There is a correlation between level of income and the incidence and prevalence of water cutoffs. And what we have found is that over the past eight years, there are certain zip codes that are always appearing. Out of nearly 60 zip codes, four stand out from the rest. If you do the intersection between the high incidence of water cutoffs over the past eight years and low income over the past eight years, these four zip codes are always among top 10. These four zip codes have a median household income of around $25,000. In the last eight years, they've seen nearly 50,000 water cutoffs. One zip code came top of the cutoff table for six of those eight years. 64130. Well, just above the deep 
about 46% of the entire population is either unemployed or just have no income whatsoever. There is 39% that are single parents. There is also 91% African American or black population. In this zip code, you'll find part of the Oak Park neighborhood. This is targeted at who? It's targeted at people that can't afford to pay a bill. My concern is, is how we gonna live? I mean, you need water. That's straight out, whatever. And somebody on a fixed income, what do you say to them? You know, you know how many, can you help me with my water bill calls? I just got one this morning. To the south of Oak Park, part of the Marlboro Coalition lies in another zip code that's seen a high rate of cutoffs. And I know that we're enjoying the rain gardens and all of the uh, infrastructure improvements and all of that, but we have to still be fair. And some thought goes into who really can afford this. Still on the east side of the city, but further north, Pamela is making a call to the water department. Thank you for contacting the Kansas City Water Services Department. She and her family only recently moved to this house from the northeast of the city. Her first water bill includes a demand for a $100 deposit. And is a deposit on here? I was wondering why. It's because on the previous account, your credit rating on that account was um, unsatisfactory. For Pamela, finding $100 is no easy task. Does it have to be paid in full? Yes, ma'am. We don't, we don't break up the deposit. OK, I have another question, because I want to make sure I be on top of this this time. I don't want to have the problem I had at the old house. Future looks bleak, but I have to observe my bills when they come in. That way, I can make calls and ask questions. Mindful that many would struggle to pay rising bills, in 2009, the city set up a low-income assistance program. Last year, this amounted to $300,000, and it helped over 650 households. The money is shared by over 30 nonprofits, including Bishop Sullivan Center. We get a little bit of money, but it's not a large amount. And then it goes to other agencies as well, but we're a big agency, so we'll spend that in no time. Bishop Sullivan Center limits the times it can financially assist a client to once every 18 months. But last year, cutoffs rose by nearly 40%. And by 2021, water bills are predicted to have gone up by another 40%. It is a business, and someone has to pay for the water, for sure. I'd like to think that what happens before the water is turned off is that every effort is made to work with that client. I'd like to think that happens. I don't think that happens all of the time. Right now, City Hall's focus is on winning public support for $800 million worth of bonds that will be on the ballot in April. You're paying $160 more in property taxes than you are right now. Here, City Manager Troy Schulte campaigns for it at a meeting of the Marlboro Coalition earlier this year. The money would be mostly for infrastructure, but none of it's earmarked for the sewerage system. On the other side of Missouri, however, St. Louis has chosen to do things differently. Since 2004, it's raised nearly seven times the bond amount of Kansas City, Missouri at $2.6 billion as part of its strategy to resist steep bill rises. Next year, its wastewater bills are set to be nearly 30% less than here. I would just simply suggest to anybody, please come to our meetings, please come to the council, send your email, tell your story because it's our intention to provide that relief that folks are looking for. So we're uh, braving the weather and we're going to take these sixth grade students down to Brush Creek and we're gonna do some water testing. Our waterways are not just places we should be able to visit and enjoy. I think we need a little bit more water for some more tests who wants to get. Places for our children to explore. We need them pristine because they provide us with water water we can't live without. The question is whether it's right to deny water to so many of our poorest households as they pay to clean up rivers others are polluting. I don't want to go through having my water cut off. You know, I don't think water should be wasted, but at some point, you know, the, bill, the rate is high.
Public Works is presented by Heavy Constructors Association of Greater Kansas City.